according to Vedanta, true happiness lies in the core of our consciousness. In fact, every living being at the core has a spark of the divine. And the divine is described in Vedanta, in the Upanishads, as Satchit Ananda. Satchit Ananda we say together, but it means Sat, Chit and Ananda, which means it is the truth, it is of the essence of consciousness, Chit, that means it's not a dead thing, not inanimate. And what is its innate quality? Ananda, Ananda, happiness. So even when the Rishi said that even when you are searching for happiness in the outside world, which you should, you cannot stop yourself from doing that, keep reminding yourself that true and permanent happiness is inside us, in the deep recesses of our mind, when everything is silent and quiet, when the conflicting thoughts have been removed, when all distractions have gone, when the mind remains unruffled and calm, then comes this beautiful breeze called happiness, very often scented. And the good news is that every human being has a right to it. There's no such bar about your color or height or caste or creed, every human being has the right to touch that core. Why? Because it's your own core. You're not what somebody gives you. It's right inside you. This is the great message of Vedanta, which Swamiji called Vedantic Socialism, Swami Vivekananda. If you go by the Upanishadic understanding, which is the ancient wisdom this country can contribute, our country can contribute to the world, Inside us, at the core of our being, there is a spark of consciousness. And if it is in me, it is in you. No one in this world has been born and is living now who doesn't have the spark in them. Whether they know it or not, the yogi knows it. The saint has realized it. But whether you know it or not, when we find it, we know that it is also there in others. Now, if a spark of the divine is there in everybody, by virtue of that, everyone is equal. You may be outside different, you may, not, you may be unequal, but deep down in your core, since there is a spark of the divine, which has been described in Vedanta, in the Upanishads, as ananda, happiness. Anantam Anandam, that happiness that does not end, we are all equal. Whether you, you may have realized it, you may not have realized it. Now, if the spark of this divine is in every one of us, all of us are walking, moving temples of the divine. And therefore, what seva can you, what service can you go to the temple? Serving the less fortunate human being. I think happiness also comes when we learn that happiness is not only satisfying ourselves, but also taking care of others. There are people who have taken care of others and considered that to be their own spiritual path. Now that kind of work is called Karma Yoga. But, however, having said all this, it is true that in this world, we are faced with sorrow many times, even though we seek happiness. Very few of us even realize that it is at our core, so we look for it everywhere. Ultimately, we don't find it. Now, but we see unhappiness every now and then coming to us. You can call it sorrow if you like. This is why the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, an excellent text, which I think should be studied by people who are even not religious in any way. It's a textbook of understanding, it's a textbook of doing what you should be doing, and it's a description of finding your happiness in the midst of the world, when you realize that the Gita is supposed to have been preached in the middle of a battlefield. The Kurukshetra war 
people wonder how can someone preach during the war yes but it, that's what happened so it's for you and me and the character there arjuna to whom it is taught is also you and me we are all arjuna that way why because at certain points in our life we all face sorrow and happiness unhappiness so the first chapter of the gita is called arjuna vishad yoga you know it's only when sorrow strikes or there is pain that one even begins to think is there something more than this in this world or is this all there is to it sorrow is usually a wake up call so nothing to be afraid of when you are not afraid of sorrow anymore when you can have a friendly relationship when it comes Now, without being a friend, you cannot even study it. Without studying it, you cannot get rid of it. How can you get rid of something without studying it? So, if I run away from it all the time, I don't. Then, I'm. I cannot even understand the mechanism of sorrow. It hits you in places which you least expect. But it happens. So, in the first chapter, Arjuna is in trouble. and it's because he's in trouble that this whole geeta is explained to him which ultimately leads to happiness you know uh, <coughs> in the guru granth sahib there's a beautiful statement <coughs> dukh mein simran sab kare sukh mein kare na koi <laughs> jolly when sorrow strikes that one does some smaran simran is smaran and then you realize that perhaps there is happiness which we have not found and that happiness is in us in our being 